What's up, everyone? I'm Caleb, and I'm so glad you're here to start the party with us this week. We're moving through a series called Start the Party that's all about the promise Jesus made to us about getting the most out of life. See, you have what it takes to be a party starter in this life, and that's why we're taking some time to talk all about what it means. Now, I know that we all love a good party, and, and when we say party in this series, we mean any effort to celebrate, serve, or enjoy being with others in a way that adds value to life. And with that in mind, being a party starter simply means you're the one doing those things and inviting others to join in. Before we get into what kind of party starters we wanna be this week, let me tell you a quick story. There was this time when I was growing up in high school, kind of a little bit in middle school, but mainly in high school, where my older brother was this just fantastic runner. I mean, like D1, he literally went D1 college level distance runner. So when I started running, all the coaches thought, well, Nathan runs distance, so Caleb probably loves to run eight miles a day. So when I started running cross country and track, cross country, that was, that was my mistake. But when I started running track, I got put in all these long distance events and I hated it. I wasn't horrible at it, but I just didn't love it. And my coach, Coach Davis, one of the greatest men I've ever known in my entire life. I remember he came up to me at one practice and he goes, Caleb, what do you want to do? And I was like, sorry, what? I, I get to choose. He's like, yeah, dude, what do you want to do? And I was kind of in a rebellious phase. So I was like, coach, I want to pole vault. And he was like, okay, cool. And I was like, wait, I like actually get to, I actually get to pole vault. And pole vaulting is terrifying, okay? I did it for a year. I don't know why. I think I just didn't want to fall back on what I said. But then the following year, Coach Davis came back to me again and he said, hey, do you like pole vaulting? Do you want to, do you want to keep doing that? And I was like, you know what? I, I kind of want to try hurdle. I, I don't know. And I ended up being pretty good at it and loving it. But, but why am I telling you all this, right? Well, because I think we could all use a little more people like Coach Davis. We all need people who show up, who show they care, and who go above and beyond. Those people are party starters. I don't know about you, but for me, the whole idea of doing more than what's asked of me, it's not easy. I think that's probably why we tend to really notice when someone else does it for us. It just doesn't happen all that often, and that's what makes it really stand out. And I think if we're mega honest, most of us, myself included, would say it's way easier to just do the bare minimum. I mean, sure, we could do more, say more, help more, show up more, and be there more, but no one has asked us to do that, and it's not required of us, so we just don't. Of course, I know this bare minimum approach doesn't come from a bad place. Sometimes we do this just because we're honestly tired. You can't give more to someone else because you need someone to help you right now. Sometimes the extra effort doesn't seem like it would have any benefit. You couldn't possibly have enough time or money or resources to make that much of an impact, right? Sometimes our bare minimum is the result of fear. Maybe you wanna help someone out, you really do, but you're scared to mess it up or embarrass yourself or do or say the wrong thing. Sometimes it's the result of a lack of motivation. Maybe you're just not motivated to do much more than what you have to do right now. But no matter the reason, hear me when I say this, I think on some level, this bare minimum approach to helping others is true of all of us. But I wonder if you stop to consider it, if this is the kind of person you want to be. Do you wanna be someone who lives life at the minimum? Someone who does little more than what they have to do for someone else or do you think you might want to be someone who does a little more? Someone who chooses to go the extra mile. Someone who lives more like a party starter when it comes to helping others. In this series, we've been talking about what it means to live the full, amazing life Jesus came for us to have. And part of living that party starter life is choosing to go the extra mile. How do I know? Well, because of Jesus's example. Everything about Jesus' life, ministry, death, and resurrection was about going the extra mile for the people he loved. Paul, one of the first leaders of the Christian church, put it this way. Hold on. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
This is an extreme example of the extra mile, right? Like Jesus didn't wait for us to ask. He didn't wait for us to prove we deserved it. He didn't wait for us to get it right, show our gratitude, or even promise to never mess up again. Now, while we were still in the middle of our mess, Jesus went the extra mile. He died for us simply because he loves us. That, that's a pretty big deal. But Jesus took this extra mile stuff one step further. You could say like almost another mile further. Sorry. <laughs> he didn't just do it for us and tell us not to worry about it in our own lives. No, Jesus called us to follow his lead and do the same for others. That word demonstrates means God let Jesus's life show us a picture of what God is really like. When we go the extra mile for others, we get to show other people what God is like. Looking for moments when someone goes the extra mile is one way to look for and see God at work through the people in the everyday. Before we get to his actual words though, let me give you a little background on what was going on at the time Jesus said what we're about to read. During the time of the Roman Empire, when Jesus was on earth, Roman soldiers had all the power. They could get away with just about anything, especially when it came to the Jewish people most of whom were not Roman citizens. Now, during that time, there was a practice which basically said a Roman soldier could demand someone to carry their belongings, their heavy armor or their gear for a full mile, no questions asked. So if a Roman soldier didn't feel like carrying something, it was common for that soldier to pick a random person and force them to carry it for him for a mile. Yo, that's kind of messed up, right? You'd probably expect Jesus to say something like, hey, bro, you don't have to listen to them or don't help those soldiers do anything. They got it. But instead, take a look at what Jesus said. If anyone, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. I'm sorry, time out. What? Jesus wants us to go another mile? to do more than what's required of us, to help someone even when they've done nothing to deserve it? Yeah, <laughs> Jesus is encouraging us to go above and beyond, do more than the minimum. Don't wait to be told or asked, just help for the sake of helping because that's what a party starter does. Think of it this way, a party starter does more than what is asked of them. He's asking us to partner with him to do more for others whenever and however we can. It's an invitation to follow Jesus's lead and start the party right here, right now by going the extra mile for others when we can. Now, let me be super clear here. I'm not suggesting that you should do so much for someone else that it causes you harm. You have to take care of yourself too. You need good, healthy boundaries to know when you've done enough or when you just don't have much to give. Jesus isn't asking us to do something out of obligation or because someone else is using their power to make us do something. So what do we do with all this? If we wanna be party starters who do more than what is asked of us, where do we start? Well, I think a great place to start is with that question we asked earlier. What kind of person do you wanna be? Do you wanna be someone who does the minimum or do you wanna be someone who goes the extra mile? Before you can move forward, you have to decide who you want to be. And then make a decision to do something you don't have to do. And, and it's okay to start small. Remember, the extra mile will look different for each one of us and for each situation we're in. So think about just one way you can choose to go that extra mile this week. What do you think would happen if you did more to help around the house this week without being asked? What might it look like if you were generous and kind with someone you know who's lonely? What if you did something unexpected to help someone at church? What can you do to help a friend you know needs it? Think about it like this. What does it mean to roll out the red carpet for someone, right? <laughs> what does it mean to roll out the red carpet for someone else? Chances are we've all heard this saying before. We use it to describe incredible service, top tier experiences in special occasions. A red carpet represents going above and beyond to make someone else feel important, unique, and celebrated. So what would it look like if we were the kind of people who decided 
to roll out the red carpet for other people wherever we go. Not literally though, that'd really be just so weird. <laughs> but in the ways we treat others in going the extra mile for those around us and in serving others in ways we don't have to, but choose to in order to make a positive impact in their lives and ours. When I think of the types of events that have red carpets, I think of world-class parties. So it's pretty clear that a party starter is someone who rolls out the red carpet for others. Over time, you can build this muscle of serving, loving, and caring for others, and I promise you, you'll be glad you did. And finally, remember that sometimes you need to let somebody else walk with you. Sometimes you need somebody else to go the extra mile for you. That's part of life. So if that's the season you're in right now, please don't be afraid to speak up. In fact, your small group is the perfect place to start. Because in your small group, you're surrounded by people who want to help you. Other party starters who are willing to go the extra mile. So consider talking to your group today about how you can walk with each other through hard seasons and beyond. And remember, a party starter does more than what is asked. And that's what I hope you'll consider doing this week. As you head out, think about this question. What's one way I can go the extra mile for someone else this week? <laughs>